The Amman School of Excellence in Lebanon provides education to underprivileged Lebanese, Syrian, and Palestinian refugee children. Amman means safety, and this school will secure their futures by breaking the cycle of poverty faced by refugees around the world and providing a chance for a better future. For 16,000 rand, you can make dreams come true. Africa Muslims Agency, empowering, educating, inspiring. نا جعلنا على قلوبهم أكنة أن يفقهوه وفي آذانهم وقرا وإن تدعهم إلى الهدى فلن يهتدوا إذا أبدا وربك الغفور ذو الرحمة لو يؤاخذهم بما كسبوا لعجل لعجل لهم العذاب بل لهم موعد لن يجدوا من دونه موئلا وتلك القرى أهلكناهم لما ظلموا وجعلنا لمهلكهم وجعلنا وجعلنا لمهلكهم موعدا وإذ قال موسى لفتاه لا أبرح حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أو أمضي حقبا فلما بلغ مجمع بينهما نسيا حوتهما نسيا حوتهما فاتخذ سبيله في البحر سربا فلما جاوزا قال لفتاه آتنا غداءنا لقد لقينا من سفرنا هذا نصبا قال أرأيت إذ أوينا إلى الصخرة فإني نسيت الحوت وما أنسانيه الشيء وما أنسانيه إلا الشيطان أن أذكره واتخذ سبيله في البحر عجبا قال ذلك ما كنا نبغ فارتد على آثارهما قصصا فوجد عبدا من عبادنا آتيناه رحمة من عندنا وعلمناه من لدنا علما قال له موسى هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا قال إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا وكيف تصبر على ما لم تحط به خبرا قال ستجدني إن شاء الله صابرا ولا أعصي لك أمرا قال فإن اتبعتني فلا تسألني عن شيء حتى أحدث لك منه ذكرا صدق الله العظيم
Verily, Almighty Allah speaks the truth. Jazakallah khair, shukran and bait ramakasi to Hafiz Mahir Didriks for that very melodious recitation of the glorious Quran. May Almighty Allah accept and may Allah bless us all through the barakah of the Quran. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. My dearly beloved Jamaatul Muslimin, respected elders, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, and beautiful youth, I greet you with the universal greetings of peace, love, and mercy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We begin in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. All praise be to Allah, who is the creator, the nourisher, and the sustainer of the universe. Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. As a Muslim, I bear witness that I believe in the absolute oneness of Allah and that Allah has no partner whatsoever. Wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu, and I bear witness that Sayyidina Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the absolute final of all divine emissaries and prophets from Allah. Alhamdulillah, I don't think anyone can deny the fact that we are indeed living in times of catastrophic crises, which probably might lead to World War III. The world is in turmoil, the world is in conflict, and no one can deny that. And just when the whole world seems to have become relaxed with wearing of masks, hoping probably to bid farewell to COVID-19 very soon. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alameen. The Russian invasion of Ukraine is causing a massive political instability and turmoil throughout the world. Let me state to you from the very onset that this khutbah today is not meant as a secular political analysis, because I'm not a political anal analyst. Also, we are not here stating anything whereby we take a side in the conflict. We are not on the side of Russia, nor on the side of Ukraine, or any other side whatsoever, because this conflict has brought about heated debate even within our local Muslim community, Muslims have fall out with each other because of their perspective and their opinion with regard to the conflict. Why do we want to sacrifice our brotherhood and our friendship for a conflict which we have no control over? Rather, I suggest we should look at things and at world issues and that everything around us, look at it with a lens of Iman. A lens which is facilitated by the glorious Quran. How to look at things and how to look at issues. Because it is Allah in his glorious book, Al-Quran, who exhorts us and who tells us who are the true believers, who are those who truly fear and are conscious of Almighty Allah. الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا الذين يتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض. It is those people who truly reflect and take cognizance of the creation of the heavens and the earth. So Allah wants us to be cognizant and to take note of our surroundings, whether it is from the creation in the heavens or the creation or natural phenomena and happenings around us, take note, O, Im, o Ummah of Islam, and do not be blinded with the lenses of injustice and inequality. Also, Allah encourages us by saying, Awalam yasiru fil ard kayfa kana aqibatul mukaddibin. Why do you not travel throughout the earth? And look at the fact effects of those people. How I have dealt with those people who rejected me. And those people who rejected my signs and my clear ayat 
see, go through the world and see how I have dealt with them. So Allah wants us not to be like ostriches and only be in the masjid and only bury our hand, our heads in the sand as if nothing is happening around us. We need to take cognizance of the fact and say even though this conflict and war is now currently taking place in Ukraine by the invasion of Russia, it does affect us. Remember more than a hundred years ago when World War I took place, many of the Middle Eastern countries weren't directly involved, but later on the whole world became involved and millions of innocent lives were taken. So much so at the end of World War I, Britain had the audacity to give Palestine to the Jews. Palestine which in the first place didn't belong to them. This is the world hypocrisy that has been going on ever since. And you can see it now again, the world hypocrisy in this current conflict and crisis in the Ukraine by the invasion of the Russian army. Because what I want to highlight here and tell you that we are not here to take sides and the enemy want us to take parts. They want us to take sides that at the end of the day will say, can you see the Muslims, they supported so and so, so today they are our enemy. We are not here to take sides. We are only on the side of justice. We are not pro-war. We are not pro-Russia. We are not pro-Ukraine. We are not pro-anyone. We are pro-sanctity of life. Because war is evil. War is the result of the killing and the slaying of millions of innocent civilian lives who have no control over what is happening throughout the world. So let us focus on world hypocrisy. Taking into consideration the leaning and the support many of NATO and the Western world gives their support to Ukraine in opposition to Russia. Let us remind the world that very recently with the invasion of Russia in Afghanistan, tens of thousands of people and even recently with the US-led war in Afghanistan, tens of thousands of Afghanistan people fled their country in search of basic food and for safety and it was estimated that approximately 5 million children faced starvation and famine and an agonizing and painful death. Why? When Afghanistan still is reeling of the effect of that invasion and the imposed war upon them, still battling to find their feet, where was the world community to raise the cry for justice for the Afghanistan people like they are raising the cry now for Ukraine. And yet rightfully everyone should raise their voice for justice and speak out against injustice, but with an eye of justice and equality and not of racism and world hypocrisy. If you look at Syria, when Syria was bombed to smithereens and still being bombed and still being invaded and still millions of people lost their lives, how many millions of Syrian people fled for their lives, leaving behind homes and everything that they own. And when they used to come by the borders of their neighboring countries and of Western countries, they would turn back purely on the grounds of they being Syrians and not Westerners or Europeans. How many of them were turning back? Yet, yet, 
at the moment the UK has opened itself up by saying we have place to receive 4 million people refugees from Ukraine but thus far only about 1 million 1.2 million left Ukraine and all of them didn't go to UK. Where did the UK suddenly get place to, to take in these Ukrainian people? Suddenly they have place. Or I ask myself the question, what do they know that the rest of us don't know? This is the hypocrisy that is going on. Opening your borders for people with blue eyes and blonde hair, so-called Europeans, but when non-Europeans who are also refugees, who are also in the same, facing the same crisis, when they reach out, their women being raped, their children crying of starvation, dying of malnutrition, their elderly people die of fatigue, traveling miles upon miles looking for help, then suddenly you turn a blind eye and brutally chase these people back because they are not of your race, because they are not of your ethnicity. Where is the world crying out for justice when more than 70 years now Palestine has been bleeding Exactly what Russia is doing to Ukraine, invading Ukraine, wanting to take over Ukraine. More than 70 years ago, Israel invaded the Palestinians. They took over and they, up till today, they are confiscating the rightful land of the Palestinians, evicting them from their homes that families stayed in for centuries. And they are still evicting them and stealing the lands and building settlements for Jews all over. And Israel, the illegitimate racist state of Israel, has now opened their arms and say to the Ukrainians, welcome, we have place for you. How can you give place to other people in a place which in the first place don't belong to you? Where is the cry for justice? of the civilized world. Is it because they are not of your ethnicity? And you're only stretching out your arms now to people of Ukraine because they are Europeans with blue eyes and blonde hair? Is it because your outreach is based on the foundation of your racism? Therefore, we need to open our eyes. Where is the world with a voice and cry for justice against the Hindu government of India who is continuously oppressing the people of Kashmir, putting Kashmir into occupation, suppressing them, oppressing them, raping their women, denying them of basic rights in Kashmir. Where is the world who is now crying out with a voice, appealing and asking for justice? These millions of oppressed and suffering people must be wondering what makes their plight and their human humanitarian crisis so unimportant in comparison to the Ukrainian people. Yes, Rightfully, we should reach out to Ukraine if they're suffering. We should reach out to Russia if there's help needed. We should reach out to everyone who is in need of help. Is there someone in need of help there? If there's a doctor or someone, can they just tend to the brother there, please? So, the world today is showing their hypocrisy towards the Muslim world and people of a not so light and white skin. And so, Jamaat al Muslimin, our Muslim stands, we need to take cognizance of the words of Rasulullah, who so beautifully tells us. 
Al kufru millatun wahida. And I want you to take note of these words. The Nabi said, Al kufru millatun wahida. That kufr, unbelief, is one and the same breed. They are all organizing and cooperating against Islam and against Muslims. And so, let all parties, all the parties in this conflict, they have blood on their hands. The crusaders and everyone throughout history showed us that they waged wars to spread their concept of capitalism and their version of democracy. On the other hand, the Eastern Bloc strove to spread communism. Yes, the Muslim armies of the past also waged wars, but we went out for war because to protect the expanding borders of the Islamic world who faced dangers and who faced extermination. And also the Muslim armies went out to protect the innocent oppressed people throughout the world. So we don't need to have any inferiority complex. We stand always for what the Quran commands us and that is what is right and what is justice. So again I want to say in conclusion that we are not pro-Russia and we are not pro-Ukraine even though today if you look in Russia there's 25 million Muslims in Russia. Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah. But we don't support a country if they are in the wrong, irrespective of whether they are Muslim or not. If you are wrong, you are wrong. And the Prophet clearly says that Allah will assist a Muslim government as long as they are on the truth and the haq. And Allah will assist a non-Muslim government as long as they are on the truth and the haq. As long as they don't oppress and are not unjust, Allah will assist them. So you find today in Russia about plus minus 25 million Muslims and more than 8,000 masajid and Islamic centers throughout Russia. Despite that, we are not pro-Russia. Despite Ukraine being anti-Islam and whatever their stance is, we will not stand here today and say we are anti-Ukraine. We are not pro-Ukraine also. We are pro-sanctity of life. Because the Quran say that the life of every single human being, be it Muslim or non-Muslim, is sacred and it is holy and it is valuable in the eyes of Allah. So important that if one human life is killed unjustly, it is like killing the whole of humanity. And if one human life, be it Muslim or non-Muslim, one human life is saved, it is like saving the whole of humanity. And therefore as Muslims, we need to be that same voice, that reasonable voice calling out for justice, calling out for right, because Allah says in the Quran, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah You are the best community Allah say because Allah has chosen you to call people to do good stand for the truth and prohibit and prevent everything that is bad and everything that is evil and just finally to give you a, a, a a, an understanding of how the world media is and the world hypocrisy. A few days ago, a Ukrainian man blew himself up with a bridge in order that the Russians may not proceed and cross the bridge. And what did the mainstream media say? They hailed him as a hero. He's a hero. But when a Palestinian or a Muslim had to do that, Immediately they say, terrorist, fundamentalist, religious zealot, 
all the names. Not that blowing yourself up, I don't justify that. I will never justify that. I'm trying to show you and tell you the hypocrisy of the world community. And therefore, I salute the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Imran Khan, when NATO told him that he must get involved in this conflict, his country must get involved and be pro-Russia, he told them in no uncertain terms, do you take us for your slaves? We are not your fools. As we will say in Cape Town, we're not your lighty. We're not your boys. Don't dare tell us where to stand and what side to take. So, oh Muslims, I implore you, stand for truth, stand for justice, and stand for the sanctity of life all the time. This is what the Quran teaches us. We are not rebels, we are not fundamentalists, we are not extremists. As Muslims, we walk the moderate and the straight path and always calling out for justice for the entire world. May Almighty Allah accept. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Just a few announcements. We have been asked to make dua for my cousin, Abu Bakr Alexander from Factoryton. He passed away yesterday. His janaza was also yesterday. And also my cousin, Fatima Kaska's daughter, Yumna Kaska, who also passed away. And her janaza is today at 3.30 p.m. May Allah grant them both. And all deceased, may Allah grant them Jannah to offer those. And may Allah shower them with his forgiveness and his maghfira. Amin. We also, I would like to also remind you that our Wednesday night series lectures are going very, very well in preparation to receive Ramadan with hearts of love and joy. Last Wednesday, two days, nights ago, we had Sheikh Zaid Fatar gave an excellent lecture on management of time. This coming Wednesday night after Maghrib to Ishai, we will have the Honorable Sheikh Saadullah Khan who will speak to us on the greatness of Al-Quran, the Ramadan, the month of the glorious Quran. Everyone is welcome, males and females, Wednesday evening after Maghrib, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah, our Arabic khutbah and our salah will be done by one of my co-imams and who is also a very vibrant member of our executive committee, also the treasurer of the committee, of the exco committee, none other than Hafiz Ali Pangakar, will do the Arabic khutbah and the salah, inshallah. Shukran, may Allah bless us all and our families, and may Allah keep us safe, and may Allah guide us and protect us that the conflict that is happening there in Ukraine does not spread further to the rest of the world. Amin. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Allah Shadow Shadu Muhammad Rasulullah 
أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصنع إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين رب اختم لنا بالخير برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته 
الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاة حيا للصلاة حيا للفلاح حيا للفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا ماكثين فيه أبدا وينذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم ولا لآبائهم كبرت كلمة تخرج من أفواههم إن يقولون إلا كذبا الحمد لله الذي يسبح له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له شهادة تنجي قائلها من عذاب أليم وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله حبيب الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين وقال تعالى الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار صدق الله العلي العظيم أقول كون هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولوالدي ولوالديكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم وزد وتعلم ودفد وبارك زلالك وكمالك على زين عبادك وأشرف نبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم سلم رضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل صحابة أجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر والصلاة والسلام على سيد البشر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين وقال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم عن خلفاء الراشدين ساداتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين وعن بقية الصحابة والقرابة والتابعين وتابع التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك نبنا وإليك المصير ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين 
ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي الكربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله يذكركم وارعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون واكم الصلاة I just uh, forgot to announce that this coming Thursday after Maghrib, inshallah, we will have our Ruwa program, Nisbi Sha'ban, inshallah, Thursday night after Maghrib, inshallah. Shukran. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, Hayala salat, hayala al-falah. قد قامت السلاة قد قامت السلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سوي سطية مرحمكم الله الله لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم خير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن الذين آمنوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربي فليعمل عملا صالحا فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم 
مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم خير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم التواب الرحيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم نتوب إليك ونسألك توبة ومغفرة إنه هو التواب الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت ربنا وتعاليت يا ذا الجنان والإكرام سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا واغفر لنا فإنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معطي لما منعت ولا راد لما قضيت ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد اللهم إنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكرنا وأنثانا اللهم من أحييتهم منا فأحيم على الإسلام ومن توفيتهم منا فتوفهم على الإيمان اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وأسكنهم الجنة اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وأدخلهم الجنة اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وروحهم في الجنة فروحوا وريحان وجنة نعيم يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين رضيت بالله ربا وبالاسلام دينا وبمحمد نبيا ورسولا صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين 
قال الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. The Amman School of Excellence in Lebanon provides education to underprivileged Lebanese, Syrian, and Palestinian refugee children. Amman means safety. And this school will secure their futures by breaking the cycle of poverty faced by refugees around the world and providing a chance for a better future. For 16,000 Rand, you can make dreams come true. Africa Muslims Agency, empowering, educating, inspiring.